Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Yep, still working on Scott's reels. Uh, this one is the Quantum Iron. It's the 410C. It's a wide carriage version of the reel. And uh, this one's got a, a little bit of a gear noise in it. Kind of hard to hear. So I'm hoping that a uh, cleanup, uh, get the old greases out of there, put fresh grease in, it'll solve that. It can be a situation where this one is simply wear. And you're never going to uh, to fix the gear noise, but that doesn't mean that the reel can't go fishing. Overall, it's smooth. The free spool lever release works, and uh, it pops back when it's time to, to start reeling in the line. So we're going to take this reel apart. We're going to show you how to service it, how to get it out there fishing again. <clears throat> so I start by removing the exterior pieces, and as I do, I want to encourage you to... Subscribe to my channel if you like the art of reel repair, if you want to learn a little bit about fishing reels, if you want to learn their histories and the like. Well, I cover all of that and more on my channel, and subscribing is the best way to, to see why or what it is that I'm working on and learn a little bit more about fishing reels. All right, I took the nut cap off. It was secured by a screw. Next up then was a 10 millimeter nut that holds the handle on, and then we can remove the handle. It's a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way if you're uh, working on a reel like this, particularly if you don't know how this reel is set up. So pictures like here would be important because it would tell you that there is a tension spring between the handle and the star adjuster. And now we can remove the star adjuster. This is a nice bait casting reel. It's in league with the Abu uh, Garcia type of uh, ambassadors and the like, and uh, has a little bit more capacity, but uh, overall a nice reel. There was a flat washer that just came out from underneath that star adjuster, and when I take the pieces and parts off, they all go into a parts tray like you see here. That parts tray is nothing more than the bottom of a, a fast food container, but it's, uh, it's getting re reused, repurposed, recycled, whatever the, the right R is in all of that and I would encourage you to do the same. It's kind of what the idea behind Second Chance Tackle is. Take a reel that uh, needs some repairs, needs some service, and get it out there, give it a second chance. What we're gonna see right now are those two thumb screws that are holding on the side plate. I'm not sure if it's gonna release the whole side plate or not, so I'm gonna start with that. And it uh, looks like we need to remove the two inner screws to release that side plate. Those are Phillips head screwdriver screws. We'll take those out. And then we'll see how we do. You notice somebody who had some long hair was fishing with this rod and got some tangled up there in the works. All right, the two screws that I'm taking out here, I want to make sure are the same size. They are. I'm going to just put them in a corner. Now let's see if we can get that side plate off. Well, I'm guessing I got one more screw, the one on the click mechanism here. I'm guessing that's got to come off. Yep, that's going to hold it on too. I don't know why they do that one, but they do. And uh, we have to take that click mechanism off. Or at least the lever for the click mechanism we have to take off in order to get that side plate off. Now that side plate should come off. And you can see that these two long screws here that are embedded in the case, well, they go all the way through to tie this reel to the back. Just looking for the bar. This is the bar for the uh, free spool. And this is a good place to take a picture as well so that you know how this reel is set up, how it comes apart, so that when it comes time to reassemble, well, you can put it back together again. Just going to lay that side plate off to the side, knowing that I have that little lever still on there. This should lift off now. It does. There's nothing much under there. Just a little bit of, of dirt and debris, which we'll go clean up. Now we want to take a look. We have two springs that are on the yoke. I like to get those off right away. Those springs tend to shoot, and if they shoot, well, they become problematic. Also notice over here that you have an anti-reverse dog that's going to be held in place by one of those uh, screws. Actually, it's going to be held in place by the stud here. So you want to make sure that you note the location of it. 
Let's see if we can just lift this whole piece up. Well, we can't. We have a bearing and a, and a shim washer. And then we have the anti-reverse clutch. So I guess it could have if I had a little bit steadier hand. And we have the collar for the anti-reverse clutch. So that back end piece, well, that's just a, uh, a fail safe. This is the clutch itself. Now we should be able to take the main gear off. You'll see the anti-reverse setup now, the second portion of this, the, what I'll call the failsafe since we have the clutch. And that should come up as well. There's a little washer that's kind of holding it tight. Then we have our flick ratchet or anti-reverse collar. And a little bit stubborn. There we go. So there's a lot of dried grease on the shaft. That's what's causing this to, to come out a little bit slow, but it is out. And I'm just laying these out for a moment so that we make sure that we do a good examination on the parts and all. All right, then we're going to take the pinion gear and yoke off. Those are going to go into my parts tray. And this is your free spool assembly. If you needed to remove this, you can take that out with the screw. Uh, but for a general cleanup, all we have to do is, is make sure that we're in good condition and clean. And we can do that without removing that. What I do want to remove is the gear shaft here because I believe we have a burring underneath that that's going to need some oil. Now I'm leaving those internal parts on my desk kind of the way that I took them out. And uh, just because I don't expect this to be a long and drawn out process here. Well, we have a bushing underneath, but that's okay. All right, we're going to take some WD-40 or any penetrating oil that you may have, and we're going to squirt down the insides. There's not much dirt left on this one, but remember, we did find some, some dirt in there, so let's make sure that it's clean. I'm going to use the penetrating oil to loosen what little bit of grease and dirt and debris there is on this. And then I'm going to... Put a little bit of grease onto the back end of this. We got to clean this off. This uh, you saw how difficult it was to get that click ratchet up. So we're going to just clean that off with some penetrating oil, a little bit of steel wool, just where that grease kind of got embedded there. So while I'm doing this, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular. If you leave it in the comment section, I will be happy to try and give you a response, hopefully guide you through something. Maybe you're working on a reel and you have a little bit of trouble with that reel. If you leave it in the question section, I'll try and give you an answer if I know it. If I don't know the answer to it, I will try to uh, point you in the right direction. We put some grease onto the back of the stud. That goes back into the, the carrier. We align the two pieces with Our um, holes. Now we're going to grab our screws and get those back in. And those of you that watch watch me know that me and these little screws, well, we have competitions from time to time. All right, that's one. We'll grab the second one. Now, as I mentioned, there was some gear noise going on here. Your noise happens a couple of different ways. It happens because there's uh, wear. It happens because there's lack of lubrication. It happens because there's too much lubrication. There's all kinds of causes for it. But what you want to make sure is you take care to uh, clean and to re-lube as much of this reel as you can. All right, we got all the old dirty greases out of that. Next up then on this uh, assembly was that click ratchet. We're going to go ahead and put that back in. I want to clean that off. So while I clean that off, I'm going to remove that anti-reverse dog. And we'll show you how that anti-reverse dog goes back on the click ratchet in case you've, you've worked on this before. This is a fork. It has two tines on it. It splits the click ratchet like that, one on each side, and that's ready for reinstall. 
Remember, we have the hole over here where that uh, is going to lodge itself. So let's try and point it over in that direction as we got to put this back together. Now that doesn't sit right on there as it is. You need to just kind of move that over a little bit and out of the way. Remember we had the hard washer one on top of that to kind of hold that in place. And now we can do some work on this uh, washer setup here. And see if we can't work on the main gear. Want to remove the drag washer. The drag washer is in good condition. Doesn't look like this has been overfished or anything. It's nice and clean. It's a hard washer. We're going to clean off the uh, pressure plate or, or metal washer. We're going to clean the inside of the gear. And then we noticed that there was gear noise. So let's take a, a hard brush. This can be a metal brush. You can use a um, toothbrush, hard bristled brush, whatever. Just make sure that all of the channels on these teeth are clear. You can see I'm accumulating some dirt on both sides here. And you want to make sure that they're uniform, that they're not bent or chipped. And this one's in good condition. So we're going to make sure that we put some grease on that before we, we do any more. The grease I'm using is a um, fishing reel grease. It's pen precision reel grease. And you want to make sure that regardless of whose brand it is, that you use a fishing reel grease when you go to reassemble your reel. Before I put that on, I'm going to come back to this yoke. You can see that we have some old greases and debris on there. Let's get that out of the way because that's the other gear that could be making the noise. They're all contributing factors. And as I mentioned, that, that can be making noise because it doesn't have grease. It can be making noise because the old grease is getting in the way and it's not tracking properly. Or it can make noise because teeth are bent and uh, not working properly. All right, want to do the same thing with the teeth on this one. We go ahead and grab that brush. This one has a little bit more debris in it than the other one did. We want to make sure that they get cleared, and they are. When you go for this real uh, position now, you want to look on this yoke and find the angles. The angles are going to face towards the back. Now this one's pretty easy. You can't mess it up too much. At least you can't mess it up on the uh, install side because they're offset. This hole is not centered. So this is the way it's going to lay down with the ramps behind it. The ramps behind it are going to be pushed up and back by this piece here on the jack. This part you can mess up. That's the part that accepts the spool. So that's got to face back when you go to reassemble. Put a little bit of grease in the carrier. Face that backwards. Or face that to the spool. There's no front or back, I guess, on that. And then we'll just put a little bit more grease onto the teeth here. And we can go ahead and we can put that in. Now we still haven't put the springs on. That'll be the last piece that we're going to put on here. And we can go ahead and reinstall. And you can see that it's an offset there. All right. Well, the reason I did that first was because I want to mesh that main gear's teeth in there. And sometimes it's a little harder to mesh the main gear if you're... Uh, if you have to put that uh, yoke in secondary. All right, the main gear goes in. Press down. I'm going to get this out of the way for a moment. I'm going to clean off my brush so that no hairs get in the way. I'm going to take our washer in next and our, our pressure plate, our hard washer. We want to take our spool out to do the servicing there. There's a burring underneath here. You want to go ahead and oil that burring. There's a burring in the back. Go oil that. There's a little bit of dirt on the side case here. We're going to get rid of that. Some old grease. I'm just using a pick to, to work that old grease out of there. And then just a little bit of oil onto that assembly there. That's going to drive your um, it's going to drive your spool and it's going to drive your level wind. On the back here are the two brakes for the spool. 
Uh, those will help control cast. I'm going to put a little bit of grease onto both sides of the shaft on that spool. Go ahead and put the spool back in. We're going to take the core assembly now and put that back on. With that collar on, we can get ready to reinstall the uh, balance of this reel. We're going to take our two screws that belong on the yoke, our springs, I said screws, springs. Then we have our setup for the, the cover here. One of those little shims came out. We want to aim the, the stud here with the hole for the anti-reverse dog to hold that in place right there. And we should be able to come right over the top of this. There we go. Relatively easy. And then we want to take the balance of the pieces we didn't put in. There's a bearing shield that goes there. Next up is another bearing. And we have the second bearing shield. Those are those small washers. And we have the two tension washers. And we have the flat washer next. So that's the internal set now. That should just be holding as it is. We want to grab our case now, work those two long screws to the holes in the side plate. Drop that down. Make sure that you get the, the override through the case. And you pretty much have to play a little bit to get these thumb screws in position. Just like that. Now we have the two screws that go to the bridge plate, or the ones that are holding that yoke position, if you will. Very interesting kind of a setup here, the way they choose to set this up. I'll take the one for the other side. Then we only have a couple more pieces to go. So if you're like Scott, if you have a reel that uh, you'd like to have service but uh, don't have the time to do it yourself, I do service reels by mail. And if you send a note to my email, I will be happy to provide you with that service and repair information. Okay, we have this, uh, this lever arm goes on next. It's a rectangle. the screw that's going to hold that down. Then we'll put that star adjuster on, put the handle on, and it should be ready for a test. There's only one other thing mechanically we got to do, and the mechanical is to just clean the pole and the worm assembly, which is right underneath here. Now this is a plastic cap. Be careful with this cap when you take it off and when you reinstall, because if you break this cap, well, Let's just say you're going to have a hard time with the uh, reinstall. Okay, you want to get this pole out. This one just fell out. It was very cooperative. And you want to make sure that you clean the tracks, the shoulders here, and that you examine that pole to make sure that both points are in good condition. This one is. We're going to just simply put it right back in. Sometimes easier said than done. It's got to go in square. There's not a lot of tolerance with those points. There we go. Put a little bit of oil in there. And then if you turn the, the reel, and kind of slide it back and forth there, you will get it to seat properly. I'm looking as I'm noting behind here, this reel was made in Japan. 
Not sure who in it's a quantum real, so I'm not sure if quantum had their own plant there or if uh, they had another plant making it for them. I'm going to assume for a moment that they had their own plant there. We want to take the star adjuster next. Star adjuster goes on. And what we're doing is, what did we do? We took this reel completely apart. We, we cleaned up any of the residual creases and the like that were hanging out there. We inspected all the pieces and parts, make sure that they were in good condition, which they were. Uh, we re-oiled, re-greased, re-lubed. And uh, let's see if we quieted the reel down at all, or if it's just uh, one of those things where, well, yeah, the, the wear on the reel is the reason for it. Remember what we said, if you took pictures, you knew that that little spring assembly went there. Handle goes next. Now we have a nut. That's that 10 millimeter nut that we took off. I like to put these on by hand as much as I can before I go to a wrench. And then generally, if you land flat with the the top of the nut kind of perpendicular to that screw hole, you will align this. And I guess in some regards, years of experience does help there. It did work. So I'll put this back in, see how we did. I'm going to tighten down the drag completely. I want to make sure that rides. We should be in gear now, so let's see if we got a... Well, it is quieter, so there you go. I think that's a good part of it. Now we put some greases in there, so you might want to release some of the pressure on the spool. You do that by the spool adjuster. Oh yeah, this one's just nice and easy now. Nice and easy and a whole lot quieter. All right, this is your click mechanism. Click mechanism is working. Let's push your free spool in. Make sure that that's going. It is. Make sure it bounces back, and there you go. So we've, uh, we're going to declare this one a success and ready to go fishing again. So to everybody who's a first responder and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you've been doing to keep us safe during the pandemic. And to everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.